As a canine behaviorist and one who specializes in Mastiff breeds, I've been honored to be able to help people raise and train thousands of incredible Connie Corsos all around the globe. And the Connie Corso is one of my favorite breeds on the planet by a long way. But when it comes to helping so many people raise Connie Corso puppies, you see the things that time and time again people really struggle with. And when it comes to puppies in particular, the number one problem that people feel like is a huge issue by far more than any other problem is Connie Corso puppy biting. So today in this video I'm going to once and for all give you the tips and tricks that you need to master puppy biting from a young age and be able to focus on the more important things to set you and your Corso up for huge amounts of success. So when it comes to stopping your Connie Corso puppy from biting things, it really is quite simply a game of two halves. Stop them from biting on you, your family, friends, clothes, and things you don't want them to bite, but get them to chew and bite on the things that you do want them to. Now, to be able to achieve that, I follow my three-step process of correct, redirect, and reinforce. But when it comes to puppy biting, and obviously we're talking about usually very young puppies as early as eight weeks old, we have to consider a few more things and make sure that we're being fair, gentle, loving leaders and setting our dogs up for success. Now, all dogs, whether they're eight weeks old or all the way up to eight years old, learn in very similar ways. And they learn through a combination of correcting behaviors that you or their parents or their litter mates don't want them to do or through reinforcement, reward and praise of the behaviors that you do want them to do. So then when it comes to puppy biting in particular, let's dive into the specifics of correct, redirect and reinforce. And when it comes to correcting puppy biting, yes, I do believe that we should be correcting puppy biting and we should be consistent with it from day one because with Connie Corsos in particular growing to be such large powerful breeds it is not something that you want your four month six month nine month old Connie Corso puppy to still be displaying it goes from cute with a tiny little eight week puppy to incredibly scary and dangerous in a few short months so yes we are going to correct that undesirable behavior and we're going to do it with one of two ways we've got active corrections which can be slight touch corrections or it could be slight bits of lead corrections with a slip lead at absolute most at this age there's no need for tools like prong collars or remote collars at this age little bits of touch correction little bits of lead correction are more than sufficient to communicate to your dog in an active fashion please do not do this anymore it's exactly what their litter mates would do and more importantly it's exactly what their mother would do if they're biting too much if they're playing too much she would use a verbal correction and if they don't listen she would then utilize touch corrections with her teeth to communicate that enough is enough which then takes us to the second stage of the correction which is pairing it with a verbal anytime that you are going to utilize any form of correction you should always put a ah ah or a ch or a no noise alongside it what that does is it conditions your verbal correction to your physical one then as your puppy gets older you can remove the physical correction and you're left with what we call an empowered verbal correction a verbal correction that actually means something a verbal correction that actually carries weight which allows you to very quickly communicate to your dog even if you're not right there by them even if you don't have leads or tools attached to them that they are doing something unacceptable and inappropriate but if that is something that you don't quite feel comfortable administering yourself then you could look at pursuing what we call a passive correction to do that it's best to have a collar on your dog just a simple flat collar and when they start to get excited when they start to be puppy biting and doing the wrong things we completely go into robot mode we don't give them eye contact we don't talk to them and we go still static and completely shut down at the same time we simply hold on to their collar and if you hold a dog's collar on the side of their neck you will be able to hold them in such a way that even if they're trying to bite your hand they're not going to be able to and we go completely cold and we simply wait 
For some dogs, this may take a few seconds. For some dogs, especially the first time, it might take a few minutes. But we do not let that dog move. We do not let that dog go until they relax and calm down. We're not physically correcting them, we're simply just holding them in place with their collar. Once they have calmed down and remained calm for a few seconds, we can then let go of the collar and we can go back to playing and move on to the next steps we're going to talk about in just a minute. But if they start to build back up, if they make the wrong mistake again, we can simply remove all of our energy, we go cold, we go robotic, we hold on to the collar and we hold them there again until they calm down. Once they're calm, we let them go. And over time, the dog will learn that being calm allows play to continue. Getting too excited and too mouthy shuts play down. That is a longer process in my experience. An active correction is often much quicker, but simply some people don't necessarily feel comfortable with it. And both these options absolutely do work, but they are just the first step of the equation. We then have to go to step two and step three if we want great success and to have widespread ramifications for the rest of our dog's lives. Step two is then redirection. We correct, we redirect, we reinforce. So we redirect them to chewing on something that they should be chewing on. That means that we should always have access to toys and things that we do want them to chew. So if they make a mistake and chew on our hands or our clothes, we can correct that mistake but then we can give them something that we do want them to chew instead. Then when they're chewing on the right thing, we move on to step three. And step three is to reinforce the desirable behavior. So when your dog is chewing the right things, we can use our verbal markers. Yes, good, good boy, good girl. Nice tone of voice and communicate to them clearly that this is what we want from them. It can also be that we come down and we give them a nice stroke. Maybe he's chewing something here and we're letting and know, yes, good boy, that's good. We could even offer a treat. Now, bear in mind, they're probably gonna drop the thing they're chewing to take the treat off you, and you might have to factor that in to how consistent you can be with giving a treat for chewing the right things, but simply the act of chewing is a reward in and of itself. So by letting them continue to chew on that thing is also a reward, is also reinforcement. And that is how you can very, very quickly, and it doesn't have to be dramatic, it doesn't have to be stressful, but you can can absolutely get on top of puppy biting very quickly. When they're doing biting the wrong thing, correct them. Use an active correction or a passive correction. Then redirect them onto what you do want them to bite. Give them a chew toy. Give them something that is appropriate for them to chew. When they're chewing on the right thing, we praise and reward. So the bad behavior of them chewing on you comes down. The good behavior of them chewing on one of their toys goes up and we're left with a dog that's chewing the right thing, first time, every time, bing, bang, bosh, perfect Connie Corso, and we're off to the races. Then we can focus on all the other fun stuff that comes with training.